Let's learn to remove elements from a list. Um, so let's start with this example. And I'm going to create a new file. Uh, I'm going to call it filter.racket. Code, of course. Code. Okay. And I want to close these files that are not needed anymore. Link racket. Okay, now I copy this. Um, define, remove zero, takes a list, returns to do. Okay, and if I run this, um, which is called filter, gives you errors. Okay. So the idea, let's let's discuss the, the spec first and try to understand what remo remove zero should do. Um, if the list starts, list is as such, where you have zero, one, three, zero, four, you should get a result uh, list with just one, three, four. So obviously it's removing zeros from the list. If the list does not have zeros, uh, the original list should be returned. Okay, nothing too crazy. So let's try to come up with this exercise. Uh, this is, we need to go through the whole list. So as such, we need to have, um, we're going to write this conditional that checks if the, if we are in the base case of the list or if we are in the recursive step. So let's do that. Is the list empty? And if it is, what do we do? Uh, otherwise, let's do something else, right? So uh, the objective is to remove zeros. So if we get an empty list and we want to remove zeros from it, what do we get? Exactly. We get the exact same list. MT or L would be equivalent. So that is it. So if the list is empty, then there's nothing to remove and the list is already filtered out. Um, okay, so next, what do we want to do? We want to check if the element zero is the first element of the list. And if it is, we want to keep it in the list. Otherwise, we want to remove it. How do we do that? Well, we can do... Um, Maybe we want to keep the value first. Um, so let's call it head. And what we do is the first element of the list. So now we check. Um, uh, let's just add a conditional for that. So if the first element of the list is um, equal to zero, we're going to do something. Otherwise, it's not, and we will do something else. Okay, so what do we do? Uh, if the first element is in the list, what should we do? We want to discard the element. Um, so if we call remove zero to the rest of the list, so, so we should always do that, right? We should always, in the recursive step, step, we should call the recursive function to the rest of the list. Um, do we need to do something else with the result? Well, zero does not need to be re-added to the list. So in this case, if we just call uh, re uh, remove zero of the rest and we do not add that element back to the list, I guess we get the list without that zero. Otherwise, uh, well, we need to put that element back. So what we do is we do the cons again, uh, remove zero, and we do rest of L, right? So things we don't want to do, right? Um, so let's see first if this works. Okay, this works. So things we don't want to do, uh, well, we don't, we certainly don't want to do this right? We don't want to do this. Why? Because, I mean, we're not making the list smaller. So this would create an endless loop. See, it's running forever. Um, so that's, that would be wrong. Uh, and if we remove, if we don't add it back to the list, that means we always get the empty list, right? Um, because in this case, we're never adding anything back to the results. The res base case of the result is empty. Nothing is ever added. So therefore, it's empty all the, all the time. Uh, so we need to have a case where we do uh, want to put the element back. 
Um, of course, if you by mistake um, do not do this, you know, don't call rest. Again, you get endless loop. Uh, similarly here, if you forget to add rest here, you also get endless loop. Okay. Another error that could happen is, um, well, you forget to you forget to call the recursive step. So, for instance, here when the first element is zero, we didn't call remove zero. What does that do? Well, what it's going to do is it's going to only remove the first element of the list, right? Because it's just returning whatever comes after that. So, in this case, it's not going to remove the second element of the list. Um, right, so that's why the zero is still here. Okay, so that's basically some possible mistakes that you could have done here. Uh, now, this version is correct. Now, now, please look at this code and try to understand whether or not it's tail recursive optimized. Um, and if not, why? And if not, how could we make this code tail recursive optimized? Um, Look at the slides. So this is the implementation I come up with. I actually did the reverse. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, so this uh, example is of course not uh, optimized because the outermost uh, function, in this case it is, so in this case it's tail call optimized, but there is a branch that is not tail call recursive, which is uh, this one. So therefore, the whole function is not uh, tail call optimized. Okay, so um, now let's try to generalize this. So one thing we could do is, um, you know, you could try to, let's try to refactor this code. So instead of saying, oh, I want to remove uh, zero, I could just say, I want to remove some value. So you could eat first, first way of, of generalizing or refactoring this code to make it more general would be instead of remove zero, let's just say remove any V. Uh, so in, this, in that case, instead of comparing to zero, you would compare to V. Um, so in that case, um, let's copy paste the example. So then I could do remove zero. Another thing I could do is I could remove one and here I could remove two. So if I remove one, I should get um, zero, three, zero, four. And if I remove two, I should get this. Let's see if things are working. Need to call V. So here the error is saying error team is matched. So what I'm looking for is function call to remove. And now I'm going to check how many arguments. In this case, there was only one and there should be two. So that's why this error appeared. Okay, now it's fixed. Uh, so this is one possible generalization. Uh, generalize by um, not having Generalize by uh, generalize the number being removed, but we can go a step further and we can can generalize this a bit further. So we could remove, um, you know, you could define remove zero version two um, l by calling uh, remove zero of l, right? So this would be a trivial way of doing it. And now we could do v2, this is version 2, still works, right? Uh, another generalization I could do is um, why, do we, uh, why are we checking with v? Uh, before we've seen ways of generalizing, why don't we just add a new function? So as we saw before, a function is a, a very uh, effective way of generalizing code. So here we would be generalizing what kind of function are we comparing against to remove. So uh, that is known as the filter predicate, the filter function that takes a predicate. Uh, and instead of checking if something is equal to V, we could just do pre pred 
predicate of, of um, first. And if the predicate is true, oh, actually, I think in usually, uh, yeah, the way we write is to keep. So if the thing returns true, so you kind of have to flip the parameters. So if if uh, to keep if we want to keep the first element of the list, then uh, I did the, the reverse of what I wanted to do. If we want to keep the element, then we uh, do cons. Otherwise, we do not do a cons. Okay. Now, let's see if this still works. Um, now we could uh, redefine remove zero. Remove, uh, I mean, remove altogether, right? Remove v2, which takes a v and an l. And what it does is it uh, calls filter uh, lambda x. And what we do is equal uh, v to x. And when it's not equal, when it's equal, I want, when it's not equal, I want to keep. When it's, um, yeah, when it's different, I want to keep. Uh, and otherwise return call to well. And now I want to just make sure everything works. Okay, call this to v2. Okay, and I run it again. v inbound, where was this? Line 32. Yes, there's no more v. Where is this saying v? Ah, yes, because here should be filter. Here should be to keep. to keep, here should be filter. Okay, seems to be working. We put a five here, just so you guys believe me. Okay, should be a three. Okay. So what we, we, did we do? We just showed you, I just showed you two ways of generalizing the function where the most general version is this one with a parameter. Uh, where a function is being used for, as an extension point. Um, and uh, basically, if the predicate is true, predicate is just a function that returns a Boolean. If that returns true, then you keep the value, otherwise you filter it out. Uh, showed you how to encode the less general into the more general. I actually showed you more, even a, a version in between these two, which is just remove n. Then I asked you if it's still recursive, and we already answered that, it is not. Um, and then what I would like you guys to do as an exercise is try to rewrite this code using the, the pattern that I showed you to um, make it tail recursive. And this is the, the tail recursive version. This is just a good exercise just to see if you guys understood how to apply that pattern. Uh, again, for the homework, um, you will be able to use a function, but it's still good to know how to do it. So I think you should at least try to do it once. Uh, and, and the filter would be a good candidate for that. Okay, and then in our next lesson, we're going to learn how to generalize this, this, this process of, of this, this style of recursion, and what we can achieve with it. Okay, hope you had a good one.